Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Would any children who are going to children's liturgy please come to the front? My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Hey, 
Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which you have been called. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his power, his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. 
They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are celebrating the ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, into heaven. So, was this seismic event in the life of our Lord an ending? Or was it in some way a new beginning? Well, the correct answer, of course, is that the, it is both. Yes, the ascension marked the conclusion of our Lord's earthly life and ministry, but clearly it was also very much a new beginning. You see, for St. Mark and for all the New Testament writers, Christ's ascension inaugurates a whole new age. It inaugurates the age of the Church. Because it is in and through his Church today that Jesus Christ continues the ministry and the work that he began during his earthly life. Now, it is critical to understand that Christ's Holy Church is much, much more than just an institution. Because the Church is, first and foremost, the Lord's own people. All of us, all of those who have been baptized with water and the Holy Spirit. Which means that the, that the parting command of Jesus which was, taken, was given first to his original disciples, that command is now given to each and every one of us. Now, it is given this very day. Go into the whole world. Proclaim the good news to the whole of creation. It's interesting that even in what is so often called our post-Christian and secular age, the way most people number the years still reflects that fundamental belief that we are living in a new age, an age that belongs to Jesus Christ. After all, most of us still designate the years before our Lord's birth using the letters B, C meaning before Christ. The years after, we designate with A.D. Although A.D. does not mean after death, as so many people think. A.D. stands for the Latin words Anno Domini, in the year of the Lord. Because these are the years that belong to Christ, belong to the Jesus who is the Lord, who is the master of all of human history. And my friends, this is also the final age, at the end of which Jesus Christ will come again. Make no mistake. He will not come in weakness and obscurity as he first came at Bethlehem, but he will come in power and with great glory which is why we should resist with all of our might any attempts to abandon the terms B.C. and A.D. in favor of the newfangled secular terms C.E., meaning Common Era, and B.C.E., 
before the common era. After all, the message of the angel at the conclusion of today's first reading should be crystal clear. This Jesus, whom has been taken up from you into heaven, will come again in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. That is descriptive language, of course. It's poetic imagery, used to suggest something far beyond the power of our own human language to adequately describe. And the Gospel is also using this descriptive language when it says that Jesus, after his ascension into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. We need to know that this does not mean that Jesus is now somehow confined to a fixed physical location, as much as it means that our Lord now exercises a particular divine function. For Jesus now reigns. He reigns universally as our prophet, as our priest, and as our king. Now, a prophet, as the Bible understands it, is not someone who foretells the future. Rather, a prophet is a person who speaks for God. Jesus is also our priest, we human priests being his representatives. It is Jesus, for instance, who grants authority to forgive sins when properly confessed to a priest in the sacrament of penance. And it is Jesus who is the true celebrant at every Mass. Today's second reading goes on to speak of Jesus Christ as King. Once again, using descriptive language, God has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body. So to sum up, the church today, which is the body of Christ, is that sphere where Christ's kingly rule is acknowledged. But sadly, sadly, the world in which the Church must live in 2024 continues to reject its true King. And because of that, humanity continues to suffer the violence, the turmoil, chaos and anguish that we see daily in our newspapers and in the media. You see, the Church's task, which means the task of each and every one of us, our task now is to expand that sphere in which Christ's sovereign rule is acknowledged. And we do this not principally by our words, because talk can be cheap, we do this principally by the contagious force of our own Christian example. My friends, make no mistake about it. We will be judged. We will be judged by Christ the King. And our eternal future hangs in the balance. As Jesus himself says in Matthew's Gospel, Whoever is not with me is against me. Was there ever a more important time then for us to take up our responsibility and to actively proclaim that good news?
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. On this day, when Jesus was taken from our midst into the glories of heaven, let us come before Almighty God in solemn prayer. We pray that the spirit of wisdom and courage may fill the hearts of all who guide and govern God's holy people, especially the bishops and priests of our diocese, that they will flourish in their ministry as shepherds of souls. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And We pray that the Lord's victory over evil will fill the church with his saving power, strengthen her to guide all people to the truth of Christ, and enlighten those who are plagued by doubt and fear. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the truth of the gospel will guide all in authority, especially in our country and our province, that they may follow the truth of God's law and promote respect for the sanctity of all human life. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the Lord will bless those who care for the poor, the sick, the homeless, and the marginalized, that they may be living signs of his love for all people. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that Christ, the Prince of Peace, will bless all who are suffering because of warfare, oppression, or violence with his almighty power and comforting spirit. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the power of Christ, risen from the dead, may give comfort and healing to all who are suffering, especially the sick of our parish, and any who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the glory of the resurrection will shine on all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of our parish. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. seek the 
intercession of our Blessed Lady, the Queen of Heaven and Earth, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer the sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants.
and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are here, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory, our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant, to, grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
Our communion hymn is number 570, Gift of Finest Wheat, 570.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that the Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Couple of notices today. Reminder that our parish golf tournament is coming up on June 2nd, and tickets are on sale after Mass this morning in the South Tower entrance. This coming Tuesday at 7 o'clock in the evening, you are all very welcome to the Parish Hall uh, for a talk by Dr. Josie Lombardi on the power of prayer. I think if you, uh, if you make the time to come, you'll find her a very, very dynamic speaker and a very, uh, very worthwhile evening. Also coming up in the next few weeks, Wednesday, May 22nd, the relic of St. Andre Bisset will be visiting here at the Basilica one of our own Canadian saints. And uh, Thursday, May 30th, is our Corpus Christi procession. There are flyers about both of those in today's bulletin. Today, we begin the Michael House baby bottle campaign once again. There are baby bottles at the back of the church. Please take one, fill it with your spare change, bills, checks, visa st statements, whatever you want to put in there. Um, bring it back by Father's Day. We'll make sure that it goes to Michael House and all the proceeds uh, support the work of Michael House in their work with mothers in crisis. The gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Chaley Shrine burn in loving memory of the deceased members of the Sheehy and Castellan families. Would all mothers please bow your heads? God the Father, through his Son, the Virgin Mary's child, has brought joy to all Christian mothers as they see the hope of eternal life shine on their children. May he bless you, the mothers of our parish. You now thank God for the gift of your children. May you be one with your children in thanking God forever in heaven, through Christ Jesus our Lord. A very happy Mother's Day to all of you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.